Hello, welcome back to Project 63, and we're still on the rear subframe. Again? But this is the, the final part now, so we're going to do all the full assembly, put the radius arms back in, and then put it back up in the car. Mm -hmm. So, it's nice and shiny, Steve. What's the finish we've got here? Okay, we've gone for a paint finish here in two-pack instead of the powder coating. It's very shiny, isn't it? Do, it is. do you mean to go quite so glossy? Um, didn't really have a choice it, <laughs> as it came black. It looks quite nice. Yes. Don't get me wrong, it looks, it looks good. It's, it can um, soon dull off once it's been under the car for a few yeah. weeks. Absolutely, yeah. It's always a debate, isn't it, between paint and powder coat? It was. And I think if you blast them both off, if you are using a second-hand subframe, from my experience, paint does last longer. Mm -hmm. It drips into all the crevices inside. If you've had any kind of rust inside the subframe, I think powder coating is just recipe for it rusting inside out, personally. People have different opinions on it. But Which is why we went for the paint. And the next thing that people have different opinions on is, do you build <laughs> the subframe complete on the bench and then put it in, or put the subframe in and then assemble it in the car? Well, we've decided to build it on the bench for viewing, but we will see whether it was a good idea when we try and fit it. It's going to be quite heavy, isn't it? By the time you've got the radius arms in there. Yeah, but just... what we've decided is we'll build it on the bench just for viewing pleasure. And then to get it in, we'll actually put a sheet of uh, ply underneath it, jack it into position with a couple of three of us there. We can jiggle it around and make life easy. So this is the way forward with this one. So this is a relatively standard road rebuild. We're not going to do a lot of the modifications that you would normally do on a race car. So all this rear rail, that's all staying standard. Um, it hasn't been thinned down or anything like that. Race cars, you tend to check for the rear tracking before you put it all together and before you paint it. Because they tend to run straight ahead parallel or even a little bit of toe out, you just have to make sure that the rear radius arms are not touching on the subframe exactly, yes. when you put it in, but we haven't done that because these all, all came straight out. This is as it came out, reconditioned, and it'll all be put back together. So realistically, everything should fit. So here you go. We'll crack on, get it all reassembled. We'll do one side first and then we'll film the other side so we look like proper experts. Okay, so let's get the subframe reassembled. We've got the radius arm that we've made earlier. Excuse the mess in the background, by the way, we're in the process of moving at the moment. So we've got boxes and parts everywhere, but all the more reason to get this back in the car so we can make Project 63 a little bit more mobile. So first step, because it's all been painted, blasted, then painted really nicely, we do have a, a layer of paint on all, all the threads. So I'm gonna start off with a 516 UNF tap. So we've got two on the top, I've actually flipped the subframe around, so this is the bottom. You'll see a little bit of paint coming out. Just saves you cross-threading the screws. So you've got one there and one there as well for the tracking brackets, but we'll, we'll tap all these out now and then we'll be ready to go in a minute. Moving on to the radius arm, we've got the pin here, the main shaft. Buffed it clean, there's a couple of light marks on there, but it's still within tolerance. We did notice there was a bit of mess that went into this hole here. So put the nipple on there, pumped a new layer of grease through until it changed colour because you don't want any of that going into the uh, refurbished radius arm. Before you put it into the arm you might want to just check to make sure that this end goes nicely into the hole on the subframe. I had a, a small amount of paint on there, I filed a little bit off. Slide that shaft in like so, should go through nice and easy. Let's put the cup in for the knuckle joint into there. It's easier to do that now than when it's in situ. Okay, so you just want to put these washers back on. They've got like a, a grease groove that goes inside. It's two different sizes. So if you push that on there, on the inside, it's the bigger one, smaller one on the outside. This can be really tricky, depending on the quality of the rubbers. We've used these ones from mini spares. They seem pretty good on the other side. So you need to stretch them over. What I tend to do, put them on to the washer first, just kind of sit them on just like that. And then you can drop it on. Should go over like that. So that's your, your grease seal. And then same again on the other side. So push that over, 
push that on and then that should go like that. It's quite good actually. Straight on, we'll put the grease through afterwards. Okay, don't forget this is upside down. So you just pass that through. And if you've done all your checks, that should be a piece of cake. At which point you realize you've ordered everything apart from the radius arm pin nut and washer. These are pence, but we can clean them up, I think, and make them look like new again. Okay, then we move to the outer brackets. So these are standard ones. They are fixed, so you just have the fixed hole in the center there, and then you have a slight adjustment using shims here for tracking to adjust toe in and toe out. And we are working on a fancy new design, which will be coming out at some point in the future. We've got the MED logo engraved on there. These are quite a bit thicker steel, a lot stronger. And you'll see here, they have an adjustable slot which is gonna come out with a pack of different shims so you can adjust the camber angle on the back. It will still be adjustable toe by using the shims, but we think that on the, the full race cars where you quite often touch curbs, this would be a lot stronger. So you loosely put it in place just to hold the tracking bracket in place because there's a fair amount of wiggle room 516 UNF screws, some new zinc plated ones. You can get stainless ones, but I mean, we're probably not gonna take this car out in the rain. So just be really careful, make sure they are going in square because it's so easy to strip these threads. Somewhere out there, there's a, a mini driving around with a 3.8 bolt and three 516 in the rear subframe. <laughs> and that was me as a teenager, so you're welcome. We've got the top fixings in, no problem at all. We did have to put temporarily a cap head screw in there which is not ideal just really struggle with that bracket getting it to fit properly but it's on there for now anyway so now we're going to install the rubber spring this is a red rubber spring for road rally light competition ideal for fast road and the med adjustable ride height platform here's a standard unit from the car you can't adjust the ride height with that so you've got the rubber cone on the end and a fixed ride height so this system replaces that with an adjustable ride height platform. You see there you've got the, the lock nut, which can move up and down, stainless steel, really nice quality thread. There's no slack in that whatsoever. And you can wind that up and down to adjust your ride height. This has all been redesigned on here, so it's a lot stronger on the back. So this is a different radius angle here. It's also wider on the platform itself where the spring comes into contact. So you see, it really helps to spread the load. When you come to assemble the kit, just a small amount of copper grease. Again, so you can make sure it stays freely adjustable. If you look down the end of the shaft, this is a 10 mil hex adjuster. Now, we're not gonna modify this car to allow the adjuster because that would mean removing the rear valance or putting an access hole in. But you can, on a full race car, take out the center thread here. So you enlarge that hole. If you look inside, you need to enlarge that hole there as well and you can pass your hex adjuster bar inside through the rear valance panel so there's a hole just here and you'll be able to adjust the ride height in situ without even jacking the car up now you, what you want to do when you're assembling this you wind it all the way in to make it as short as possible you're not going to run the ride height like this once it's settled to make more space between that point there and that point there you have to lift the arm up Now you've got that assembled like so, probably want to put the damper in. So we've got Spax Krypton gas adjustable lifter up, which is essentially down. And you should be able to just gently wiggle that in place. So just wind that on the pin, stop it falling off. Put the handbrake quadrant back in. On the really early cars, they ran a, a bolt on the later ones, it was a pin. A lot of these bits are no longer available, but these are okay. So pass that through from the other side. Seems too long, but this is the one that came off, so. There you go, just make sure that still moves and that routes the handbrake cable from behind here. So it comes through the subframe, inside, round the corner, and up to the brake shoe. What you might find it easier to do now is wind the adjuster all the way back out. You see it's dropped down already and it's fallen out. So if you wind it all the way out, 
take up any slack to stop it falling to pieces. Just lift the arm when you do it. So that looks a little bit ridiculous and it's gonna give you monster truck ride height, but it just stops everything falling to pieces. Right, so now all that's in place, I'm gonna torque up all the fixings. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is fit the anti-roll bar. So the bar goes across here. So you have these mountain brackets with the nylon bushes inside. So these need to go onto the subframe first. We've already pre-drilled all the holes before we had it painted. A little bit of grease. Obviously you have to fit this before you fit the bar on, otherwise you won't get to the top of the bolt. Put them in, in loosely, make sure the bar still fits. If it doesn't, you've got a bit of a, <laughs> you've got a, bit of a problem, but that should all line up quite nicely. Pinched up. Pinched up. Now you can do the other ones up. Okay, and then you put the nylon bushes over the top and clamp it down. You need to leave these a little bit loose so you've got some movement on there. Then you've got the drop links that go on the end. So these are the blades and then the drop links. You see it's adjustable on the end. So you can get these as vertical as possible. Okay, just a little dab of thread lock. Don't use the super heavy duty stuff. Just put them all in, darn them off by hand. Slightly nip those up. You could probably torque all these if you wanted to, but we're just gonna do it by fill, just nip it. You'll see, because the suspension is, is drooped all the way down, it's not really in the right place yet, but we'll just connect one. A little bit of copper slip. Again, start it off by hand, just saves cross-threading it. Good. A little bit more, but that will do. So that's that connected and left loose. We're gonna put the, the other blade and drop link on, but we're gonna leave that disconnected until right at the end of the car build when we do the suspension setup, because obviously the anti-roll bar is gonna connect the left and right hand side of the car. So if you're playing around with ride heights and everything else, it's gonna alter everything. So just leave one side disconnected. Okay, so anti-roll bar done. We're gonna come back to the brake hose. So you've got the Goodridge hose, which comes through this hole here. You can see we've already done the other side, like that. That's your flexi hose in place. Then we're gonna to come to the brake bias valve. We've got a brand new one here from Mini Spares. You'll see the old one is uh, probably beyond saving. And with brakes, you don't really wanna mess around. Now, the idea of this is obviously to stop you locking up the rear wheels this will reduce the pressure to the rear. So the line from the front of the car comes underneath the floor and then round the subframe. There's normally like a little um, twisty bit here to take out any vibration from the pipe into there and then from there to there, pretty obvious, and then from there to that side. Again, from mini spares, I bought this pre-made pipe. It wasn't bent, so I used my special eBay tool. And you want to leave the bias valve loose because if it's all in place, it's nigh on impossible to get them all in. For this particular car, I found the pre-made pipe was a bit long. You had to put too many kinks and bends into the pipe. From the top, looking down, it looked pretty good, but then when I stood back and Steve said as well, that looks pretty awful. So garage a few doors down, bent me up a, a new section of pipe. So it's a slightly different color, but uh, hey ho, this one fits a bit better. This, I think this is more of a copper material. So I would likely put that in place. check it when you come to bleed the brakes later on just make sure none of these are leaking i guess you get a feel for these after a while how tight to make them about there and then the final one now that's in place let's tighten up the rear bias valve and that's finished you may want to tweak the pipe slightly depending on where it's ended up i might um, just tweak that over a touch like that just just keep it looking neat isn't it Okay, then we come to the subframe mount. So you've got four of these. On this particular year of car, these are all identical. Um, Steve's done a reasonably good job of cleaning them off and painting them up. And we've got these poly bushes, 
bit stiffer than standard rubber, so it's gonna hold the subframe a bit more firmly in the back of the car, and they shouldn't perish. You know when you watch a YouTube video and they mess up something vitally important and you're screaming? Yeah, I've done that. So the front subframe mount, you really need to put in before you put the radius arm on, because although you can slide it in, I should have remembered this, but it's been a few years since I built one of these up, you can't get to the nut on the back with the radius arm in place. So, uh, oops, I won't show it on the video, but I'm gonna strip all this out quickly and then just tighten it up. Okay, so we can't do the front one for now, but we'll do the back one. You need the chunky section, the bigger section at the back, but don't forget we've got this upside down at the moment, so you wanna um, flip that like that, so the floor goes on there. So push, push that on. Big fat washer, nylock, and a 5.8 socket. And that will just squash up and compress the bush. As if by magic, the front mounts on the subframe have appeared. We've put those on and the rest of the subframe is ready to go back in. We've found a pallet, which is just about the right width and put it on a trolley jack. It's, it's actually quite good. It's quite stable. So I think we'll be able to just drive it straight under and put it in. So we've got the main battery lead that runs along the floor and then up behind the subframe here and also the brake line. So front to rear brake line. See, it's got like a little pigtail in there, I guess to stop you from breaking the pipe with any vibration because the subframe's rubber mounted. So we've just replicated that on the end. And now I'm just gonna feed the brake line through so that it's the correct way around when we put the subframe back in. It's actually earth lead from a MIG welder, but it's really nice and flexible. Not only is that the main feed for the starter motor, that feeds the entire electrical system and it does have to travel all the way from the battery all the way to the front, albeit it's only, what, it's less than three meters, isn't it? Most modern cars will have the battery underneath the bonnet and everything's there nice and short. So you do have to run a slightly larger gauge. This is a 25 millimeter square, which is about right for this car. And it'll fit under the standard groove without any troubles. We've just loosely pushed that round and the brake line there, put some nice curves on it. You might want to just run a thread tap, so 516 UNF, just run it through the heel board and just run it through. You see some of the paint's gonna come out. So do that on all four, just to make sure the bolts go in nice and easy. Steve's back. Hi guys. So Steve is the- uh, Positioner. Positioner and pusher and jacker upper. Go on then. Make sure these don't touch on the valance, the top of the dampers, looks good to me. You've got to be very careful here because the, the subframe mount can actually scratch up the rear valance. That's located the trunnion where it needs to be. There we go. So this one should actually go straight in there. Right now we just take this one out, then put some copper slip on it, and then this side will be all in. So we go around to the other side now and get those in just to start with. He wants a spring washer and a flat washer. Not quite as much copper slip as Steve had on there. More the merrier. <laughs> you want to go up any? No, it's all right. Can you see the hole, where the holes line up? It's quite good actually. When you're using rubber or poly mounts, they're so much easier to actually line these up. If you're using solid ones, they're more or less impossible to get them lined up and that's where you can get into trouble with cross-threading the bolts. We've got all the front mounts in and we're just going to put the ones in the back. Okay, so we've just got all eight bolts loosely in place, four through the front and then four at the back. You need a little bit of wiggle room sometimes on the bushes at the back, just with a big screwdriver through the hole and just lightly wiggle it. We'll probably come back afterwards and take these back ones out when we put a bit of paint in the boot, but so far, so good. Let's get it tightened up. Can talk these up, but that does put quite a lot of faith in the quality of the threads and the heel board. So normally we just do this by feel, just using a small, um, small ratchet rather than a big bar, and you'll just feel when that's nipped up, which is about there. Don't go too far. 
because it will strip the thread. So you see the standard fixed brake line there and you've got the Goodridge one that we've put in on the standard bracket. If you run the car particularly low, if you tub the arches, and I'll come back to that in a sec, if you tub the arches, it will run very low suspension. And this bracket has a chance of actually hitting on the bottom of the floor, just under here. And in the worst case, it could actually crimp the brake line. You end up with no back brakes, which is obviously a little bit dangerous. So for that, if you are running tubbed arches and very, very low, we do these extended brake lines. So you see it's got uh, a banjo fixing on one end. You just run that with some stainless wraps around the back of the radius arm just there and just, just tie it in place. And then that avoids having this bracket on the top. So that's an option if you run a very low car. I said tub arches as if it was obvious. Some of you might not know what that means. So you see the level of the inner arch here. It actually comes through and drops down to the outer arch where the trim is. On a very low race mini track day car, something where you wanted to get the, the ride height as low as possible, you'd actually cut this out and it gives you, I don't know, inch and a half, two inches up, up there of extra suspension travel before the rear tires actually rub on the arches. So to do that, you basically need to cut very carefully up round here, fabricate some new inner arches so they come out flat can't really do that very easily on a car without arch extensions like on this Mark 1. And besides, this is going to be a road car, we're not going to run it that low, so not really a problem there. Okay, there you go, so that's the rear subframe looking fantastic, all back inside, ready to put back on its wheels. We didn't show you some of the nuts to do up, so you've got the um, damper nuts, obviously, to put back in there, the fuel tank. We'll come back to that in a later video, because I'm actually going to paint up some of the floor inside as well, make that look like new. And you may have seen, we've got another Mini. So this is a, a Mark II Mini Cooper, 68, hydroelastic, all original. It's been restored, um, but this is a project for future when we move over to the new workshop. So keep an eye on that soon. Um, a few little jobs on that. Project 64? No, I'm joking. Let's get on with this one first. Let's get this finished. Okay, thanks again for watching. If you want to keep up to date with everything on Project 63 and MED, make sure to subscribe to our channel and we'll bring you some more very soon.